for another application of Gauss's lemma. We have Eisenstein's criterion for irreducibility. Here, f is a polynomial over the integers. Okay, we'll assume of degree n. p is a prime. p divides all the coefficients except for a sub n. We also assume that p squared does not divide a sub 0. Okay, and that means also that a sub 0 is not exactly 0. Two things can happen. If we have that a sub n is equal to 1, then f is irreducible over the integers and the rationals. Two, if p does not divide a sub n, f is irreducible over the rationals. Now, to see 1, by Gauss's lemma, it's enough just to show irreducible over the integers. So we'll suppose that we can factor f as g times h, okay, g and h polynomials over the integers, and while the degrees of g and h are strictly between 0 and n. If we reduce this equation modulo p, so now we're going to be working over z mod p adjoint x, okay, g goes to g bar, h goes to h bar, f bar is going to be equal to g bar times h bar, because we have p divides all the coefficients except for the lead one, we get x to the n. Now, z mod p adjoint x is a ufd, so we could factor this as, okay, g bar is some x to the i, h bar is some x to the j, okay, up to units. And we have that i and j are strictly between 0 and n, i plus j equals n. Now, what does this mean? Well, here we have the constant term of g bar and h bar are both equal to zero. So that means the constant terms of g and h are both multiples of p. So the constant term of g times h is going to be a multiple of p squared, and that's going to be a contradiction. So that's our first statement. For statement two, when we reduce mod p in our argument, okay, we don't need to guarantee that the coefficient of x to the n be equal to one. We just need that it be a unit in z mod p. So all we need to assume is that p not divide a sub n. Now with this condition, we can only guarantee irreducibility over q. Okay, over the integers, we may have non-trivial content now. For a non-trivial example of Eisenstein's criterion, let's try f of x equal to x to the fourth plus x cubed plus x squared plus x plus one. Now we can rewrite this as x to the fifth minus one over x minus one. So here, all the roots are gonna be fifth roots of unity excluding one. So this polynomial has no real roots. Eisenstein's gonna guarantee that this is irreducible. So not only can we split off linear factors, but we can't factor it into a product of two irreducible quadratics over the integers or rationals. Now to see this, we can't work with the polynomial as is. Okay, all the coefficients are one, so there are no primes present. What I'll do, we're gonna replace x with x plus one. So I can rewrite our polynomial as, okay, so I'm gonna use this expression. We have an x in the denominator. In the numerator, we're gonna use the binomial theorem. So we're gonna expand using binomial coefficients. When I do that, we have x to the fourth plus 5x cubed plus 20x squared plus 20x plus 5. 5 divides all but the lead coefficient. 5 squared does not divide the constant term. So by Eisenstein, this is irreducible. Now what we do, we're just going to do a switch. So if we could factor f as g times h, I would be able to factor f evaluated x plus 1 as g of x plus 1 times h of x plus 1 and vice versa. So since this is irreducible, that means our original polynomial is irreducible. Now also note, there's nothing special about working with five here. This argument's gonna work with any prime in place of five. We finish with our main theorem. R is a UFD, then the polynomials in X over R also form a UFD. To show this, we need two things. First, that there exist finite factorizations into irreducibles for non-zero polynomials over R. Then we'll want to show that these finite factorizations are unique up to a unit. Now, for one, we start with a non-zero f of x and R join x. We'll show that f factors into a finite product of irreducibles in R join x. I can write f as c times f hat, which c is the content of f. 
f hat is a primitive polynomial for R. Now, C lives in R, which is a UFD, so I could factor C as a finite product of irreducibles in R. This will be unique up to a unit. On the other hand, f hat sits inside of R join X, and that sits inside of K join X, where K is the fraction field for R. So this is a Euclidean domain, that means it's a unique factorization domain. And in here, we can factor f hat as a product of f sub i hats, each irreducible in k join x. This is going to be unique up to an element of k star. Now, by Gauss's lemma, okay, we could change each of these. So there's going to exist f sub i's in r join x, such that f sub i hat equals u sub i f sub i. u sub i is an element of k star. We also have that f hat equals the product of the f sub i's. Now, f is equal to c times f hat. We have c factoring into a product of primes in R. f hat factors into a product of the f sub i's. But we know the f sub i's are irreducible in k join x, so they must be irreducible in R join x. So that gives our factorization into irreducibles, as we wanted. For the uniqueness, okay, we have c times f hat as a splitting of f into content and a primitive. So if I had two factorizations, I would just separate everything out into content and primitives. So here we're going to match up elements of r to elements of r, and then these factorizations are unique up to unit. Likewise, for the primitives, we're going to have these equal to these in k join x, which is also a UFD. So this factorization here is also unique up to a unit, and then we put everything together, we have that uniqueness up to a unit that we're looking for.